jobs in the Grand Army of the Republic, as we've covered many times before. They were always at a massive disadvantage, facing enemies that were far more numerous, far faster and far more maneuverable. But this didn't stop them from kicking ass. In fact, they not only did their job fairly well, but often they were even able to lend a hand to ground units too. In this video, we'll be looking at 5 such occurrences, examples of clone pilots saving the lives of their brothers. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Our first example is from the Battle of Malastare, during the Republic's forces last stand at Dug Citadel. In the face of a colossal droid army, Republic leadership decided to deploy an experimental weapon during this part of the battle, an electro-proton bomb, a massive EMP weapon intended to wipe out droids but leave clones mostly unharmed. One lucky clone Y-Wing pilot was tasked with dropping the bomb and in doing so, he probably saved thousands of clone lives. Approaching drop zone. Everyone stay tight. Remember, you've only got one shot at this. Bombs away. We're ranking this one the lowest because this guy killed a fair few of his brothers with that bomb, but if he hadn't dropped it, all of them likely would have died. The Confederacy was on the verge of overwhelming Malastare's defences at this point in the battle, and the clones and dugs rallying for a last defence were hugely outnumbered. I mean, just look at the size of the droid army. For all the skill Captain Rex, Commander Pons and their men had, they could have been wiped off the map by an army that size. They have this pilot and his droid nuke to thank for their survival. Our next clip is from the Second Battle of Geonosis during the disastrous landing at Point Rain. We all know how terribly that battle started off for the Republic. Many, many gunships were shot down, killing many clones and splitting up the invasion force. Among the gunships that were shot down was the one carrying Anakin Skywalker, Ahsoka Tano, Captain Rex and a good chunk of Torrent Company. <laughs> Black is too heavy. We're down! Repeat, down! Location 5! I just lost contact with Skywalker's team. Come on! Get up! We have to keep moving! Now, you're probably wondering where we're going with this. The clone pilot in that clip did crash, after all, and he died in the process, but in crashing, he managed to keep the gunship somewhat steady, ensuring that most of the men in the hold survived. Compare that clip to a clip of Obi-Wan's gunship pilot and how he handled the same situation. Don't play it. The zone is hot! But there's nowhere else to go! We're hit! We're going down! Ah! Brace yourselves! As you may remember, only Obi-Wan and one other clone survived that second crash and both were seriously wounded. The pilot of Anakin's gunship saved his passengers from almost certain death, or for those with plot armor, almost certain minor wounding. The Battle of Umbara was one of the Republic's most costly victories and it wouldn't have been won without the Republic Starfighter Corps. Clone pilots basically carried the whole battle. While their brothers were getting butchered by Umbarans on the ground, they were busy up in the skies, harassing separate ships to prevent them from landing droid reinforcements. Their relentless efforts were the reason the Republic was ultimately able to prevail in the ground battle. But even with the naval battle to keep them busy, they still managed to help out their brothers on the ground now and again too. Good old Oddball. Always on target. Got insurgents? No problem, just call up Oddball. He'll turn the whole ridge to glass for you, and then fly back up to space like nothing happened. The pilots on Umbara already had a ton of stuff on their plate. As the clips we get from the naval battle show, they were barely holding on in their own, but they still managed to take the time to come provide air support and save the 501st from an ambush. That's some serious reliability right there. 
Our next clip comes from the Battle of Lawless Seiyuu, a brief assault on the planet that housed the notorious Citadel prison. After a mission to rescue Jedi Master Evan Peel and his crew from the prison didn't quite go to plan, Republic ground units on Lola Seiyuu called in reinforcements for a rescue. As Republic warships and fighter squadrons engaged the Separatist blockade above the planet, three Jedi starfighters and a gunship made for the planet's surface to rescue their embattled allies. Too many droid fighters. We need more time to break through the blockade. We're out of time, Master Tim. We must break through now. Very well. Wing Commanders, form up! We're going in! I believe you've worn out your welcome. The plan for this rescue was probably to smash the blockade and then send in the gunships, but as Sacy Tin stated at the beginning of the clip, the blockade was taking longer to break through than expected. But the surface team couldn't afford to wait any longer, so the Jedi and their gunship apparently decided to just rush the blockade instead. Now that's easy enough for a Jedi, but that poor gunship pilot probably had a hell of a time keeping up, never mind managing to rescue the ground team in the nick of time. Lastly, we have a clip from the Battle of Kalida Nebula. In that battle, Anakin Skywalker and the clone pilots of Shadow Squadron attempted a bombing run on the Malevolence, hoping to stop General Grievous from committing even more war crimes. After a last minute change of plans, the bombers of Shadow Squadron unleash their payloads on the Malevolence's ion cannon, destroying it at the last possible minute and saving the Kalida Shoals Medical Center in the process. It's impossible to tell just how many clones those pilots saved. For starters, there were 60,000 wounded clones aboard the Kalida Shoals Medical Center, which Grievous was about to kill, and their lives were definitely saved. But in destroying the Ion Cannon and disabling the Malevolence, these clones essentially allowed the warship to be destroyed, and in that, they potentially saved thousands of other lives in the process. The brave clone pilots of Shadow Squadron took away the Confederacy's great big affront to the Geneva Conventions truly doing a service to their brothers in the Navy. So those are five of our favorite examples of clone pilots saving their brothers. But what do you think? Are there other clips that you would have liked to see on this list? If you guys do have five and like these series, we're happy to do a part two. So let us know in the comment section below. And just before you go guys, if you do like the music that we use in these videos, make sure you check out the playlist link at the top of the description. And if you just want to join the Whitey Geetsies community, make sure you check us out on our Discord where you can chat to myself and other Star Wars fans, and our Geetsies gaming network where you can play games with other Star Wars fans. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.